Okay, well, I guess we can go ahead and get started. We may have some others uh, joining. Uh, and just a reminder that this is being recorded, so it'll be available for other people who couldn't make it today to come along and watch, um, or for people here today to rewatch. Um, so uh, thanks for joining us for the first of our uh, spring talk series, um, which is really meant to, to sort of uh, provide tutorials on some of the most essential aspects of technology for doing kind of open and reproducible science, which is really the focus of course. Um, and so we'll have uh, a number of talks on different topics uh, in the upcoming weeks. We're starting today with um, Ziyang Zhang from the Stanford Research Computing Center, who's going to Talk to us about uh, working at the uh, the command line uh, on Unix systems. Um, so I will let you go ahead and take it away. All right. Um, thanks everybody for joining us, and uh, hopefully everybody can see my um, screen. All right. Um, um, we're seeing the. I, I don't know if you you're meaning to do like screen or slideshow because we're seeing like your presenter. Oh, there we go. Good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, Let, let's get started. Um, I have maybe 12 slides, but it's quite quite dense and uh, um, probably is much more than what I can cover in one hour. But I will just go over most of the basics and uh, uh, try to explain how, to, um, for example, use the slides I have. So I have intended for the slides to be as a kind of reference. So it's going to include some of the most basics and essentials of command line for bad shell, like variables, commands, and shell scripts, and the essentials for shell scripts like loops, conditions, and expressions as functions, and so on. So I guess uh, um, for shell uh, for bash and efficiency is a very important issue for a lot of people. You have been doing, you will be doing things repetitively and doing things over and over again. So some of the um, some of the tips I, I'm going to share are very important for the uh, efficient use of the bash shell with command line on a daily basis. And then I will include enough references for each and every topic so that you can explore further. And uh, if there's anything that's not clear, and those references will be uh, really useful for you to uh, try to understand on your own, for example. And then um, overall, I'll tr I'm trying to design this to be as a quick reference and review to include all the essentials and with, uh, uh, with enough links and information to explore further. So um, if there's more time at the end, I'll try to um, explain how to uh, run X11 forwarding and some, some of the other access issues. Because today, mostly we are trying to uh, access remote computing facilities. And uh, so uh, how to access remote uh, machines if, uh, through tunneling for X11 is one of the frequent uh, issues uh, you know, uh, our user may, may have encountered. So here is a collection of some of the most basics, including references. Um, uh, so. Uh, I'm from Stanford Research Computing Center, and one of the uh, flagship for computing flat platforms is Sherlock. Probably most of you have been using Sherlock, and we have onboarding sessions every month for uh, during the first Wednesday of every month. And uh, so I have included the, the onboarding session links and also um, some of the slides. And also, if you go to the link, you'll find the uh, uh, videos you can watch on, on, on your own if you can attend any one of those onboarding sessions that could be used very very useful uh, so uh, there, there are a couple of very useful tutorials online you can find plenty of those but i think one of the best tutorials online is from software software carpentry they have a number of licenses on uh, unixes command lines and also uh, r and python and so on and uh, the uh, courses that they offer on Linux are the Shell Novice and Shell Extras. The Shell Novice is a hands-on session, and it, uh, it took four to six hours to go over that uh, hands-on uh, uh, session for Shell Novices. So if you find, for example, some of the materials is difficult to understand, then I guess 
uh, either attend one of those uh, carpentry shell novel sessions or even just go through it following the uh, slides and presentation they have there, it could be very, very useful. So after so with that, let's go to some of the most basics on um, the uh, for the Linux command line. So Linux command line, when you are working with the Linux uh, Linux command uh, command line, uh, the first thing you may want to understand is you know some of the commands and files and how to navigate files and how to move files either locally on the same computer or remotely from, remotely from one computer to another computer. And then how to read files, how to display file contents, then how to run your commands, and then how to redirect input and output, and, and, and so on. So these are the most basic things probably you need to do on, uh, uh, on, a, on a Unix command line. Uh, but but uh, the nice thing is it's no more complicated than that. If you understand all these uh, basics, which are summarized on uh, this one single slide, probably would be able to start, you know, doing useful work and get your calculations running. So first of all, there are copy commands for any commands. If you want to understand what that command means, how to use that command means, how to use that command, you can use always use a man command. So man is for manual page. For example, if you want to understand how to use the CP, the copy command, then there are several ways you can get help information from that. You can do either a man, CP, or just do CP dash H or CP dash dash H or dash help or dash dash help. These or any one of those could be the one you, you can find, you know, which displays the help information for a particular command. And I think this is very important to keep in mind. Then there will be files, how to manage, you know, uh, manage files. And uh, you already, uh, in your storage, you have a hierarchy of files. These are organized in directories and files. So how to create files, create directories, navigate files and navigate directories. So basically just to make directories and to then, uh, for example, here I have uh, create and remove files. So those in parentheses are in color, I'll try to make that, uh, you know, um, uh, as as co command and then parameters. Anything in um, in blue probably is going to be a command, and then something in red may be the options for command and so on. That's what I, I'm trying to do, but it may not always be, uh, you know, the same. So first of all, you make directories, and uh, then you can. Uh, remove directories. Be careful with the remove if you haven't, uh, you know, there are recursive removes. So with the R dash R option, it's going to be removing the directory recursively. It's going to remove the, the subdirectories also. And, and just sometimes some of the files or directory may be sticky. It may sure it's not really easily removed, for example. Then there's another option to force it to be removed. But by default, in most cases, you know, it remove is not going to remove the uh, some of some of the spe special files, unless you have dash f option for the remove. But be careful with that. Then uh, make directories, remove directories. Then check navigating directories with cd. You can use a cd name and dot and double dots are two of the special file uh, or directory names. Dot is current directory. And double does is the parent, which is a directory one level up. So these are quite useful for navigating directories. And then, of course, the listing contents of the directory and the ls dash ahl, these are the options I use most often. Then just try to learn how to use these options. And, and to, um, once you learn that, you know, I, I, I typically I always use these options myself. Then make directories, navigating directories, then you can move files with copy. So copy, you can copy from one location to another location. For example, on any Unix system, you may have several file systems, but it's all attached to the same machine. So then you can copy from the same machine uh, from one location to another, another loca lo location. 
copy is the easiest. Again, dash R is for recursive copy. You can copy a whole directory. And then there's rsync. Rsync is basically copying the file, syncing two directories. It's more advanced than copy, and it's going to sync the context of two directories. So if you want to have some kind of um, you know, synchronization between the directories you want to copy. So those are the uh, files for copy when files I use most, most often. And, and of course, you know, for files, you have permissions. For the file permissions, uh, you already can change the, uh, the permission with ch mode for change mode. Then editors of the files, you can have several uh, editors on Linux. So the one I use the most is the BI, but for beginners, probably Nano is good enough. And uh, the most powerful one um, I have used before is Emacs, but I don't use that very often right now. But I found that BI is probably a, on, a, on a sweet spot. It's uh, powerful enough and it's not that complicated. And then how to display file content? You can use head, tail, and, and these options to look at the, you know, the first lines, first few lines, or last few lines of, of, of your file content. That's going to be very useful. That's what I use quite frequently. And then you can use can more or less to display the all the commands uh, without an editor. That's quite easy. And you can use it to, uh, to see the file context, context quickly. And then how, when you run a command, you will you, you have an input to the command and then output of the command. So depending on your on your program, very often you need to redirect the input to the program. So you have another file as an input file, and you want to run your program. For example, in this case, and that look at with that input file, which is called in in this case. Then you may need to use file input and output redirections. So the redirection to, to the input for the input is going to be a left to uh, smaller than set sign. Uh, Left, left bracket and uh, angle bracket here. So, so um, less than in means it redirects the files uh, file in to the program itself. So another cam knows the input file. And for the output file from running the uh, running the command another cam, you are going to redirect it again. We say um, greater than sign this time to a file called out. And then there's ampersand. You may or may not need that ampersand. That ampersand means some of the uh, other uh, output, which is typically go, which typically goes to the standard output. You're also go, going to be collected into that output file. So the, for the file descriptors, so on Linux there are three file uh, standard uh, file descriptors for input, for output, and for error files. So the output file is going to be two, uh, two, one, and input file is going to be zero. These are the default file scripters, and two is going to be the error message. So this means in the, for this uh, file redirection, I'll just redirect error message, uh, typically which goes to two redirect that to one, which means the output file. In this case, the output file, the standard output file, is also in turn redirect to out. So basically the output file, two means the error file that goes to the uh, one, which is the standard output file. Error goes to output, and the output is actually collecting the file out. And then at the end of that command, there's an ampersand again. So that means we run this command, the whole thing in the background. I'll talk more about how to run calculations in the background later. So here's an example for running a Python calculation, for example, on a, uh, on a command line. We will be running Python, the program, uh, the program we want to run, then the files uh, for the program. So Python, your Python script, then the output is going to be uh, in this case, instead of going to an output file, we just uh, redirect it to, to a now file. So that slash dev slash now means 
uh, you know, it's 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 a thing for anything you don't want. It's not going to collect it. It's not going to be uh, 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 collected in a file. It's just uh, for the for the output to, to go somewhere, and, and it's just uh, discarded. Discarded. Again, in this case, the errors will be go uh, will be going to the same file as the output file uh, as the output. Then again, errors output all redirect to the dev now. Um, so there's another way of redirecting files for appending files. So one single greater than sub sign is going to uh, direct all the output to that file, but rewrite that file just to get rid of the file and then start a new, a new file. Everything in that file, if there's a file, for example, in the out file, there, the contents of out will be uh, uh, removed and then a new content will go to the out file but for any reason if you want to keep the results in the out file and then want to uh, append the new result new output to the same file then you can use a double uh, greater than sign again same for the error so two you can go to the error uh, dot, uh, dot error file so those are the most basics for the um uh, command line, so files, moving files, running a program, and uh, a file I/O redirection, and editing files. So those are just a few lines. I I, I collected that much information, and uh, so I guess uh, if you have a chance to practice it a little a little bit and see with, uh, how which each one works, if you haven't used that before, and uh, then uh, with that you may already have the most basic things you need to run your program. And then in the next, I will talk more about shell variables and shell scripts. Shell is very powerful and to the, some of the power of the shell comes from the automation. So you may be doing uh, things repetitively over and over again. You may be doing quite complicated things, for example, running a calculation, getting some output, and then uh, parsing the output from one calculation and then see, uh, make, uh, make sense of the calculation and test some of the outputs and then decide what to do next. Those uh, things can always be automated and uh, it, you have to automate it in most of situations because uh, uh, you may be doing a many, uh, many calculations over and over again. So that's where you know the power of shell scripts come into play. So you can basically, the shell scripts are the collections of the typical commands you may be running on the command line. But now it's in a, a collective in a file as a program, so you can run that over and over again. So for that, you need variables or the you know typical scripting programming, um, program structures like, like loops and uh, um, conditions and so on. So that's going to be the uh, next topic I will be spend more time on. Uh, but before that, I'll talk more about uh, some of the most basic things uh, like the variables, how to run commands, and so on. So variables are one of the most fundamental things for Linux, uh, bash, bash, bash shell. So for, for a collection of the uh, variables available in the shell, in the bash shell, Unix shell, Here's a link where you can find that. And if you want to see what kind of variables are defined in your own environment, you can do one of the two things. One thing is to do ENV. ENV, if you run that command on the command line, it's going to show you all the variables which is already defined in your environment. And then you can also try to do echo. So echo is a command which lets let you echo uh, some of the contents of a variable, for example, and, and one of the uh, so the, the uh, shell variables. If you want to get contact content of that, is you are going to use a dollar sign with a variable name, and and so when you do the dollar sign and then tab a couple of times, so that's one of the shortcuts you use very very often. So if you don't know what's going to be the command to exactly, you can just type uh, the tab, it's going to auto complete and remind you what kind of uh, uh, commands may be available uh, with, with that, that, for example, 
uh, dollar sign for dereferencing. De -referencing. Um, so this is another way to get all the variables defined in your environment. Um, so the, the places on, on Unix where the variables could be collected for any uh, for particular purpose are the bash RC. So if you go to your home directory and uh, try to look at the, the files uh, which start with a dot here and dot B-A-S-H-R-C, that's the resource file for your bash shell uh, where whenever you uh, start your uh, Linux session, uh, the variables and some of the other commands will be automatically executed the dot bash rc file. And, and uh, you can define variables if you want to, the variables to take effect whenever you log on to your shell. Um, and then the other very important place is to collect the variables are the module files. In the modern uh, Linux environments, programs installed are collected as module files because uh, very often you may be using very uh, large number of different programs at any given time. For any uh, program, it has its own defined environments, including all the variables needed for that particular program. So to minimize uh, conflicts of uh, you know environments between different programs, so we use module files to manage these different programs. Then this is a very important topic, and if you use any of the one of the um, modern uh, cluster system, probably you know you will be encountering module files. I don't have much time to to cover that, but uh, here is a link to learn more about modules. So as uh, young uh, yes. here, just I have a, a comment based on you know hard uh, earned experience um, about you know, editing the bash RC or any of those sort of like login scripts. Um, the It's important to, for people to know that, you know, it's very easy to break things when you're <laughs> editing those and to not be able to log back into your account. And so one, just a couple of suggestions. One is to always make sure you have a back, whenever you go to edit, like your bash RC, to make sure you have a copy of it, like a backup that you can easily get back to. And then um, you know, in addition, always um, try opening another terminal and logging in separately into a new session before you close down your first session, because then if you if you can't log back, if you can't log in, you can always go back and return to your backup version. So you haven't like locked yourself out of your account. Yeah, that's very important. That happened to me quite a number of times when I was uh, an office user myself and and. and, and yeah, so in that situation, uh, it's it's definitely great to have a backup and you want to know what you did before. So before I always have my own backup. I never made any change or do a backup. Up. And, and, and again, the, I guess probably your backup is our system admins. They can restore things for you to some extent. <laughs> Thank you, Russ. That's very important to, you know, to, to keep in mind, uh, to keep in mind. So, uh, so the, Bash RC files, module files, those are the important places where you may be able to find some of the, uh, the variables you are, you are interested in. And some of the most important variables, the basic variables are, for example, dollar path. So dollar LD library path, dollar C path, dollar Python path, dollar module path, and so on. Those are the variables. Um, uh, for example, are special variables. If you run that e env or echo dollar sign tab a couple of times, you may see a large number of variables. And those uh, pass, low library pass, and C pass, all these passes may be part of your variables. So that's the typical variables you may see defined in the module files or in the batch RC file. So those pass files are uh, where you can find your executables. So your, your environment needs to know where to find the executables and then that's uh, uh, the locations of your uh, binary or executable files will be in the dollar pass variable. So LD library pass is where the libraries your programming needs to be able to run it. Your program will be 
uh, composed of a, a different number of libraries. Whenever you run your program, it needs to find the libraries. So you can use the libraries for, for, to know where to find and to, how, to, how to run the program itself. Then there are C pads, and these are the inclusive headers, which defines some of the functions in the libraries and so on. And, and if, uh, if you are running Python, for example, the dollar, the Python path file is important. That's where your Python program will be finding its own package locations and so on. So the module path is where your, your modules are collected. There's a default for module paths or shrug uh, if you use shrug. And also if you define your own modules and then you need to uh, you know, add uh, uh, the path for your own modules to this uh, module pass variable. So the way to define a variable like the path variable or load library variable to define it or, or um, modify that in bash shell is going to be the export command. Export is going to define a variable in this case, the path. So the way to define the variable is, for example, you can append prepend or append uh, whatever new to, to, to the existing variable. In this case, the pay at the pass is, is a list of directories. And then uh, you can add a, a pass, add a directory to the current pass variable or, or append it and if we use the uh, colon and then PWD at the end of pass, then that's going to be append to the list of directories. So there's an order of the list of directories. So from uh, from the, uh, the first to the last, that's where, that's the order your system is gonna look for binary. So if we want to um, let the your, your environment to look for executables in in the directory you define, then you need to prepend that. In this case, I use prepend. So here is another way uh, of you know running command. So, so instead of, for example, you are working in a directory. This is the directory. You have your executables. So you can either use the whole hash explicitly for that variable for that for, for that directory, and, and then or you can use the PWD for printing working directory. So this back code, back code a command in Linux. So Again, a backhold with the command. This is going to give you the value, the output of that command. So if you want to get the output of any command, like in this case, the current directory, you will just run the command and but put that command in the backhold. Then that's going to give you the value of executing that command. Um, then a, num a number of other variables which are important for shell scripting, for example, for dollar, they all start with dollar sign, but instead of um, variable names with the letters, you have the special letters for those uh, for those uh, special variables. So the dollar pound size, number of command line arguments. For example, you run a Python uh, input file and other parameter files, you have the program itself and a number of uh, options on command line or arguments on the command line. So the number of the command line arguments will be you can you can be find you can find that information this dollar pound information uh, variable. Or if you want to know what's going to be the value of the last command. If you read for example some of the configuration files for the pro for 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 a uh, for installation of a program, you will see all these different things like the dollar uh, question mark. That means if we, you know, in that file, you are running different commands, one after the other. So one command is finished, then you, you want to check whether that command is successful. So that's, that's, that's give you the exit value of the last command. It's going to be either zero or one. Zero means success and one means failure. And then dollar uh, zero, that's going to be the program, uh, the value of the program instead of the argument command line arguments. And uh, then dollar uh, star is going to be all the arguments on the command line. So it's a program, your arguments. All the arguments for that program is going to be in this dollar uh, star variable. And then you can use this uh, 
dollar edge side, but within a double code that has a special meaning. That means that all the arguments, but in this case, is is going to be for each variable is going to be double coded. So for the very for the shell variables, it's it's not very user friendly. I have a lot of problem with that. I still have problem with that, specifically for the, you know some of the uh, ways. Uh, they represent the variables. For example, in this particular case, the PWD with bad codes. And, and uh, if you don't know what bad code means it is, there's no way you can you can you can find out what's the problem. And the format is really, really strict and, and it's not very intuitive. It's just you know that you know that there's other otherwise there's no way it to figure that easily. Again, you know, for the format, it's very specific for, it, for this particular case, it is dollar sign and add sign, and then double code that has a very special format and that, that has very special meanings. And in later situations, I'll, I'll, I'll try to point out a quite a number of situations where the format of the variable or the command, how do you code, what do you code, how do you code, how many, how many codes you have, it's going to be very important. If you get that wrong, it's 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 going to be very difficult to find what's the problem. So, um, uh, like, like I mentioned, I still have a problem with that. Uh, but but uh, um, hopefully, you know, if, if you are aware of these situations and just keep in mind uh, that very much could, the problem you have could very much uh, because uh, you are you, you you are encountering the situation where the shell command format is very specific and you are missing something here, like a, a code or unclosed code and so on. Um, again, so I talked about uh, some of the uh, commands, uh, you know, how to get help on a particular command and then how you how to use auto completion and use a tab tab. So you type one or two letters of your command, then tab a couple of times, and then you will see uh, Auto completion, so uh, and remind you what kind of um, uh, commands start with that few letters, for example. Then on the command line, the arrows up and down is very useful to, you know, to go back to previous commands you used before, so you don't have to type that again. And then for um, Control A, Control E, Control K, Control Y, these all have special meanings. I found those quite useful. If you have long command, you, you want to go to the beginning, it's going to be control A. Control E is going to go to the end of the command. Control K is going to uh, you know uh, remove the command you typed. And then you can use control Y uh, to get what you would bad. So I found this quite useful. Just practice a little bit a couple of times and see what that knows means. Then another thing is the pipe of the uh, the commands on, on Linux, you run one command, it's going to have some output, and then you can redirect that uh, uh, output to the next command as an input for the next command. You can pipe a number of commands together, and that's quite useful. Also, for example, in this particular SPRIO for slur priority, and then what, what happens is this SPRO is going to output a long list of priorities for the running jobs or sure, for example. But you want to only see part of that. Then you can pipe that to the next command, which is GREP, the grab. Grab means just find lines from the previous output or, or the files uh, following the grab uh, command and find uh, uh, lines with this. Uh, Pattern with normal there, so grab normal uh, out of the output lines of uh, spider, and then you can do another pipe. And once you get this SPRO, uh, SPRO, and then grab the lines with normal, and then you can sort those by different colors of the output, because for for the normal output there are again a large number of lines you want to see that in a particular order and then you can use that key of uh, value and, 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 and key equal to three that makes a third column col col that are I forgot actually <laughs> and then you can, uh, this again maybe several screens 
long, and then you can use more to look at it so that it's going to, to display to only, only part of the output, and then you can uh, scroll down to see the rest of the output. So this is quite typical kind of for how you use commands uh, efficiently with various properties. Pipe them together and run a command, and, and then use the, use the output of the command that you are doing something else and, and, and displaying the result. So try to run this, understand this, and this is going to teach you a number of things. It's going to be the grab command, the sort command, and then pipe command, and so on. So next, I'll talk about file permissions. For any of the files you list, you do a ls listing the file in a particular directory. You may see a number of files. There are five permissions for each particular file uh, 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 item in the in the directory. Some are directories of okay, the right? So directory structure is recursive. There are directories under directories, and there are some other rep files. So there are some other uh, files which you can only read. There are other files which you can read and write. There are, there are other files which you can execute, write as executable. So there are permissions and uh, characteristics of the file. Then that's for you as the owner of the file. And then there are uh, several levels of ownership of the files on uh, Linux systems. You are the owner, and then the group you belong to may own, uh, may have some permissions. And then everybody else who has access to your to the machine may have a, a set of permissions. So it's going to be you, your group, and everybody else. Uh, so that's the ownership. Uh, there are three different levels of ownership, and for each level of ownership. You can have different file permissions, like read the file, permission to read, permission to write, or permission to ask it. These are permissions, and you can take a look at this uh, web page to learn more and more details about that. And, and then on Sherlock, we use POSIX access controls. So access control is a very nice way to set permissions for the files. You can set very specific granularity for how to uh, uh, set files. For example, your, your, you have your file permissions. As the, every member in your group may have a, a different file access position. But for example, you can add, you can grant specific permission to one or two or some of the subset of your group members, not all your group members. Then this access control. Is going to be very important. So this is a link to where you can learn more about it, how to use access controls to set file permissions. Uh, so here's an example. If I list a directory, I can see the directories which starts with a D, and then it's just a, a set of four, uh, letters. So there are a, a group nine letters grouped in, in three. So the first group is R double X for for owner and R. The second three uh, is going to be for the group, and then the last three is going to be everybody else on the on the system. So in this case, so my username is ZYZHLG, and Ruth M is uh, owner of the group in our case. So 7.0 is uh, their age will give you. So this, uh, this is the size of the file uh, in kilobyte. So it's maybe it's a dash eight makes it a lot easier to read. And then there are time steps for the file. So directories, regular files. For the regular files, you can see the R, W, and all that. There's one execute node here, it's dot A dot out. Uh, and then there are dot files. So the dot files, if you just do LS, your is not visible, but those have special meanings, for example. For some of the programs you install, and by default, um, you know, the installed program will use some of the dot directories to install some information about, about the program installed. For example, for the R, if you install R, run R, let, likely your home directory will have a dot R history directory. So if you do, if you want, if you may ever wonder, you know, where are my default locations for my R program or Python, not Python, but for R program, for example, you can do a L list and see the dot files and then for example the information for r is going to be collected in this file so these are the typical outputs you can see from listing the directories and then for the mode uh, for the change mode i mentioned that before 
That means uh, you can change the permission for a particular file. For example, for uh, for any file may may not be executable by default. If you write the type of the command, it's not going to run for anything. But if it's executable, if you type the command, it's going to run the program itself. So if you want to make a file to be executable, you use either one of those mechanisms. So change mode plus X, that means change that uh, with the X uh, permission, which is, you, you see the output here, the last one is going to be permission for executing. So that makes it a, a executable. The other one is use a, a three numbers. So first number, second number, third number for user, group, and uh, everybody else, all three uh, numbers. So for all three numbers, it's going to be a number uh, between four and seven. It's going to be additions of the value for the R, W, X. So for R, there's a value. For W, there's a value. There's X, for, uh, there's a value. For all the three modes, that there's a corresponding number. So four is for right, two is for right, one is for X. So if your file is going to be R, W, X, read, write, and executable, then that number will add up to seven. And then, so six is going to be four plus two, is, which is going to be read and write. Four is going to be read only. So you set the permissions for uh, different levels of uh, access for yourself and uh, and everybody else on the system. Um, so other useful things are the aliases. Sometimes your command is long, for example. You won't just use uh, aliases to define that. So instead of like, the whole thing here, you can just use GMS because GMS is defined aliases for that long thing and uh, then you can see all the ADRCs uh, uh, defined in your system by just using ADRC command. So again here I use a semicolon here. That's another uh, uh, shortcut for Linux commands. So you can type multiple commands on the same line as long as you separate separate the commands with a semicolon. So um, Basically, each line, each command should be on the, on, the, on a different line. But if you have uh, semicolon to separate uh, different commands on the same line, then uh, it's just like the multiple commands on multiple lines. I'll, I'll be using this uh, format quite frequently to save space in later slides. And, and you will find that quite useful, not just because of running it to, on a command line, uh, but also, for example, you want to ha have shortcuts like this. For example, if you want to uh, check something on a remote machine, on sure of you may be on the login node and uh, you want to access the, some information, some of the processes and try something on the allocated uh, uh, computer node. So instead of log on to the computer node, they can use some shortcut, for example, just SSL to the remote command, then just and then run the um, a, a series of commands, for example, in this case, you, you will be running list of results, list of files start, which starts with results and all that files is results. So this is wire card for file name. So that means anything. And, and then separate the two commands together and, and then run that command first and then run edge top command to see how the CPUs are being used. So this is, this is another quite useful uh, uh, use 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 for the semicolon. So separate several command. They can code all the command together, and then to just to issue multiple commands, uh, so that you can run that remotely without really log on to the machine itself. How about how am we of our time? So we are fifth, almost fifty minutes into into this seminar. Um, probably I covered one third of the material I wanted to cover. <laughs> um, that's that's fine. You know, I think it's, you know, um, there, there's only so much one can expect to cover. So maybe, I don't know if there's any particular things that you think are really important to, in the last few minutes for people to walk away with. Yeah, like I mentioned, so this is uh, intended to try to, try to serve as, as, as more or less a comprehensive references of the important things you may be using. 
So essentially, these are all the things I have to use every day, and to, um, and, but no more than that. Uh, so if you just take the slide and browse through these and try some of the commands and, and try some of the links, then um, you would be able to have an idea of what's, what's, what will be the things you will be using. You know, I, I, I kind of can promise you, you, know, you would be using these over and over again. So I, I think it, you know, the value of the slide here is to serve as a, as a reference of the important things you may need to understand. So um, all these commands I have here are the ones you may encounter, but that the number of those commands is not that big. It's just a small number of the commands, no more than a dozen uh, or so. Uh, let's say a dozen may be an exaggeration, but you know, if you go through the list of commands I have here, and, and I think you probably have almost everything you need on your daily um, work on a Linux command line. So here I have a few commands, for example, how, how to use a history, and how to use grab and fgrab, and how to find the files. For example, if you find file, um, you, you have your directories, and you may wonder, I have a file, but I don't know where it is. I can't just go through all the directories. You can use this find command. Then the word count, and you can use the find and count how many files of that particular name you may have, and sort those together. So those may be useful, for example, if we're on a command line, but those may be also useful when you are programming your, your shell scripts. You may be able to need to uh, find uh, a particular things in the directories, for example, a particular output file with a particular name. You know that's going to be your output file, but you need to know. Um, where it is and and, uh, and how it is named, and then use that for the for the next command your your shell uh, shell script and so on. So these are uh, important things you want to learn. And then SEDs and all those are less frequent, but those have something similar to grab. Those have regular expressions you can use to query the file. Instead of looking for information from a file, a large file, you can always use SEDs to query if there are something in the file or if there's something in, in, the, in, in the file you are interested in, but uh, you, you can't just go there and look for it, but you can always use SEDs and org to find where they are and if, if they, are, they exist and so on. Those are less frequent to use. I myself used that before, but that often, very often, but it's more for system admins. And also if you are, for example, in a situation you really need to uh, have a more complicated, complicated script to handle your calculations and so on. I used that before just quite some time ago, but I do uh, anything with this uh, complicated cell processing of a number of different calculations and so on. Then uh, the PS command is for looking at the uh, processes. Uh, so I have several com commands here, like PS, AUS, PS dash, ELF, ELF, top, edge top. Those are the things I use very often if I want to understand uh, what's going on, whether the calculation is using the right, for, right amount of cores and so on. So tr take a look at those kind of things and try to write and have a kind of a hands-on experience of what's going on. Uh, same, same for uh, the other command I have here. Uh, then the rest of it is gonna be shell scripting. Um, so, so yeah, maybe, the, I don't know if you think that's a, a good point to, uh... Could be, yeah, 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 yeah. Too much to get started on. Cool. Well, uh, we really appreciate you uh, joining us today. We have a few minutes. If anybody has questions, um, if you want to either uh, raise your hand or actually, I'm, I'm not sure if you can raise your hand because um, it's we're in webinar mode. Uh, if you can't raise your hand, you can always put a question in the chat as well. So I want to give people a moment to see if there's any questions.
Um, well, okay, we're not seeing any questions. So, um, so I guess, you know, thanks again for, for joining us. And um, yeah, I don't know if you'd be willing to share your slides, we could also, you know, sort of send them around to the people who joined us today. Um, and, uh, and I'd also recommend, you know, the other resources that, uh, that Jiang pointed us to in terms of the uh, software carpentry um, and, uh, and uh, the other things there. So, um, so thanks again.